Hello, welcome to our worship service for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. This is the last Sunday in Lent before we turn to Holy Week, which begins next Sunday. I'm Chaplain Nancy Carlson. It's great to have you worshiping with us today. Let us begin. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. I just want to stop for a moment and say we are going to do communion today. So if you uh, have communion supplies, bread and wine or grape juice, please get those ready at this time. We're going to start by singing, oh, what wondrous love is this? I can sing with you because I'm coming to you on the TV. Uh, if you are able to, you can sing in your room or just in your mind. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul? To bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down. When I was sinking down, sinking down. When I was sinking down, beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. For my soul, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll seek his love for me. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. During this season of Lent, we are called to return to the Lord with all our heart. Let us now confess our sin and seek reconciliation with God and neighbor. Merciful God, you sent Jesus Christ to save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We fail in love, neglect justice, and ignore your truth. Have mercy on us and wash away our sin. Create in us clean hearts for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading today is from the book of Jeremiah 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, 
know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Our scripture reading, our psalm is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12, and we'll read that responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, in your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you will delight truth. You delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Our second reading is from Hebrews 5, verses 5 through 10. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel today is from the 12th chapter of John, verses 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must also follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from this earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. During this past year, there are many people I have wished to see. I wish to see many of you and your beautiful faces. I wish to see my family and friends. We typically gather for all the holidays, 
with our family. And of course, none of that happened. I especially wish to see the new babies who have been born and are now six to nine months old already. I wish to see the friends I usually get together with. And of course, that doesn't happen. I imagine there are many people you wish to see as well, especially during this past year. The Greeks wished to see Jesus. They were in Jerusalem for the festival. I think it was the festival of the Passover and they probably looked around at all the crowds and spotted Philip. So they told him, sir, we wish to see Jesus. Perhaps they came a long distance to see this one who had the crowds murmuring and wondering. They wished to see this one who could heal the blind, the lame, the bleeding, and the hurting. Maybe they wanted to just touch his cloak or see the miracles that he could do. But it says they really wished to see Jesus in the flesh, to see his face, to see this one who was called the beloved son of God. People of Israel wanted to see God and how this new covenant would turn out. They had seen how the old covenants turned and when they rebelled and turned to golden calves and other idols. They perhaps remember how much they complained when they were wandering in the wilderness. They wished to see a different future. Maybe they could be obedient this time and hold up their end of the bargain. They wished to see how it would feel to have God's law written on their hearts and to have all their iniquities forgiven. I imagine they also wanted to see how it would feel to be God's people and to not have their sins remembered anymore. King David wished to see forgiveness and to have his sins not remembered anymore too. He wished to see his relationship with God restored. Psalm 51, as you may know, is attributed to King David after his affair with Bathsheba. It's been said that King David broke most, if not all, of the Ten Commandments in a short amount of time in that sordid affair. This psalm, then, is his cry of forgiveness. And King David is desperate. He is longing to see his heart cleansed and renewed. He wishes to see God's face turned toward him. Now, this is a mighty warrior king who had slayed thousands and been victorious in many battles. Now he's crying out to God with his own sense of worthlessness and despair, wondering if he is beyond mercy, beyond a relationship with God, beyond healing. He sees the stain of his sin so deep, he wonders if it's removable. Think of an ink stain on a brand new white shirt. Is that stain ever going to come out? David cries out to God because of his prior experience with God. He has seen God and knows of his hesed or steadfast love. He maybe hasn't seen God face to face, but he's seen him in a more uh, metaphorical way. David has seen the covenants God made with his people. David has seen God, God's abundant mercy. God, David has seen God's leading and wisdom for him. David has seen who God is and is pleading with God to be the God he knows now in his time of sin. He cries aloud and wonders if his sin is so bad that he has damaged the relationship beyond repair. He prays that God would blot out his transgressions and hide his face from his sins. He prays that God would not turn his face away from him. He wished to see God. David is pleading that God will see him as David and not just see his sins. And just as we would wash and clean that brand new white shirt, David is asking for his heart to be made clean, washed and purged of his many sins knowing that this is a cleansing that only God can do. David wants to be made clean with hyssop, which is what was used in a cleansing ceremony for people who had leprosy. 
The hyssop would be dipped in the blood of a sacrificed bird and then sprinkled on the person who needed to be cleaned once they were healed. And then that enabled that person to go back into community. King David wished to see the relationship with God restored so that he could again be in communion with God. Sin had drained all joy from the psalmist, King David, and only when he is back in communion with God will his joy be restored. The psalmist, desperate, broken by sin and guilt and feeling utterly worthless, is crying out to God. He feels beyond God's mercy, beyond God's love, beyond God's healing. Have you ever felt beyond the mercy of God? Have you ever felt beyond the healing power of God? Have you ever felt like you've been abandoned by God? Do you also wish to see Jesus and see God's love and grace and forgiveness in your life? If we're honest, we've all felt some of those things at different times in our lives. We might have done something so terrible that we're sure it's one of those things that God doesn't forgive. We might have prayed for healing for so long that we're sure we're beyond God's healing powers. We might have felt so worthless and useless that we're sure that God has abandoned us, left us for no good. We wish to see God. We wish to see Jesus. In our deepest, darkest hours, we wish to see the one who has been appointed by God to be a high priest, the one who can forgive all of our sins and save us from death and the devil. God appointed this son to be the one destined to be a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is the beloved son, the high priest. Through Jesus' prayers, supplication, obedience, and suffering, he became the internal source of salvation for all who obey him. During these days of continued worldwide pandemic, societal unrest, political upheaval, and climate change, we wish to see Jesus. During these times of grief and loss, pain and despair, illness and dis-ease, we wish to see Jesus. What will we see when we see Jesus? We can learn from these words from Psalm 51. We will see God's steadfast love and abundant mercy not because we're so great, but because God is. We will see that God is always for us. God loves us eternally, steadfastly, faithfully. We will see that the God who forgives King David forgives you and forgives me. The God who didn't abandon King David will never abandon you or me. We will see that the God who washed King David white as snow will cleanse us and to return to us the joy of our salvation. We will see that we are never beyond the mercy of God, never beyond the healing power of God, and never beyond the boundaries of God's love, because there aren't any. We will see the God who keeps promises and covenants and always holds up God's end of the bargain. We will see the one who sustains us and creates in us new and right and loving and clean spirit. We will see this high priest who is compassionate, loving, merciful, and gracious. We will see the one who suffers for you and for me who give us eternal life, love beyond measure, and forgiveness of all of our sins so that they are remembered no more. We wish to see Jesus. And when we do, we will see that this God, this Jesus, sees us, yes, you and me, sees us always as beloved children, loved beyond measure, 
forgiven, redeemed, and saved for eternal life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now please join me in confessing our sins using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator in heaven and earth, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we pray for the church, for the world, and for all in any need. Gracious God, we pray for the church throughout the world. We pray that you would sustain leaders of the church, encourage people to continue worshiping, whether it be on TV or on a computer or in person. We pray for those days when we can gather together and sing together. We pray for everyone who is preparing for baptism at Easter, a tradition that has been many years. We pray for all those who have been baptized. May we renew our baptisms in the water of your cleansing uh, words and sacrament. We pray for the care of the earth, for all the people on the earth, for the animals, for ecosystems, for water and land and earth and sky and seas and all of the earth, God, help us to be good stewards of this beautiful creation. We pray for peace throughout the world. We pray for peace in our communities, in our states, cities, nation, world. We pray for peace in our hearts and in our relationships. We pray for peace. We pray for an increase of justice in our land. We pray that you would bring wisdom and guidance to all who are in charge of justice. We pray that you would open our hearts and minds to your just and right ways of living. We pray for those who are hungry, homeless, unemployed, those who are at the end of their rope, those who are despairing, those who are wondering if they're beyond God's love and grace and mercy. We pray for an end to this pandemic. We pray for all who have experienced COVID, for all who continue to be on the front lines of this pandemic. And we pray for an end. We pray, thank you for the vaccine and pray that it is an end to this pandemic. We pray for all those who are sick or suffering in body, mind, or soul. Bring them your healing, your help, your strength and encouragement. We pray today for all who will die. We pray that you would send your holy angels to surround them and be with them. We pray for holy moments and divine connections. We pray that you would welcome them into your loving arms where they will be at peace for eternity. We pray for all the desires of our hearts. We pray for those we lift up to you now out loud and in our hearts. And we thank you, God, for all those who've gone before us in the faith. We thank you for their testimony, for their wisdom, for their um, passing on the faith to us. And we look forward to that day when we will see you and them face to face. Into your hands, merciful God, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, if you have your communion ready, I will do the words of institution, then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer, and then I will give you communion. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, 
gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Gracious God, we thank you that you have cleansed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, for, forgive us our sins and sustain in us clean and new hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. We will sing our closing hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Beneath the cross of Jesus, I long to take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land. A home within the wilderness, a rest upon the way. From the burning of the noontide heat and burdens of the day. Upon the cross of Jesus, my eye at times can see the very dying form of one who suffered there for me. And from my contrite heart with tears to wonders I confess the wondrous of his glorious love and my unworthiness. I take across thy shadow for my abiding place. I has no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by to know no gain or loss. My sinful self, my only shame, my glory all the cross. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, we go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining me today. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.